Mike, and thank you so much for staying with us here on the Sportsmax Zone. We turn our attention now to cricket on today's show. Well, more specifically to the events of the third test between the West Indies and England at Edgbaston, which concluded with the host defeating the Caribbean side by 10 wickets on Sunday and as a result sweeping the three-match series. Well, the West Indies, who began day three on 33 for two, in their second innings, the still 61 runs adrift of England's first innings, 376, once again failed to produce a convincing batting display. And despite half centuries from opener Mikhail Louis and Kavem Hodge, Windies could only add 142 runs for their remaining eight wickets, setting the host a measly 82 runs for victory. Well, England completed the chase without casualty and in a flash at 87 without loss in 7.2 overs, scoring the second fastest Team 50 in Test cricket on their way to victory. Well, scores in the encounter were Sydney's 282 and 175, England 376 and 87 without loss. Well, West Indies head coach Andre Coley highlighted the areas he felt his team fell short. Game, um, and even in the, um, for this game, um, and even in the, in the second test, both teams put down opportunities. Um, batters were given second and third opportunities. Um, for us, we had a significant number of our players getting to 50. If two or three of those would have been converted to 100, um, you know, we had 200 run partnerships. Potentially, you know, those would have been, if, 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 if taken deeper, um, scores, especially in the second innings, um, would have posed more of a challenge. All right, joining us via Zoom to share his own views on where the Caribbean side went wrong, it's Fazir Mohammed. Faz, how are you doing? Not the bad at all. Yeah, well, of course, um, West Indies again, Faz, you know, disappointing performance. I feel like every time I talk to you, I have to start the discussion on the same note. Um, we, ho we heard from coach this time, coach Andre Coley, a man of few words, but, you know, from time to time when we get those press conferences, love to hear from him. And he spoke about it. He spoke about the things that we analyzed previously, the fact that the batsmen, they got starts, they didn't capitalize on it. And, of course, putting down so many chances, getting the opportunities, not taking advantage of them. What do you think about what he said? Well, Mariah, he's merely restating the obvious, and yes, it's, 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 he, he's been asked the question, so he gives uh, he gives the, the, the obvious explanation. But yeah. the, the thing is, what, how do we repair this? Remember, the West Indies start a next Test series, two matches next week, Wednesday, against South Africa in Trinidad to be at the Queen's Park Oval, followed by a week after the Providence Stadium in Guyana. So. It, it, it's an opportunity to see whether or not our players are really progressing at all. Because, yes, you get a 100 partnership here, you get a 100 partnership there, you get a couple of 50s, they don't carry on to 100. But we know all of that. We see things, things happening over and over. Look, the West Indies played three test matches. We lost one by an innings and 114 runs. We lost the other one, the second one, sorry, by 241 runs. We lost the third one by 10 wickets with the opponents knocking off 84 runs in 7.4 overs, which, 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 I mean, you can't get more emphatic than that. And, and therefore, it asks, it asks the, the obvious question, are we in a situation where our players are learning? Our players are learning from their mistakes and, and, and trying their best to avoid repetition. You're never going to eliminate mistakes altogether. That, not even robots do that because they shut down at some point. So, so the thing is that, that we keep hearing these things, but we hear them time and time again. And you ask yourself, are our players in an environment where they are really push to, to excel and, and to try to, to minimize the mistakes as best as possible. Yeah, and Faz, you know, um, Jaden Seals, despite um, coming down to the end um, in that last bowling effort, um, Windy's barely got, got the opportunity to take any wickets. Well, they got no wickets, especially because the total was so low, um, England went ahead and they won. But Jaden Seals was named West Indies player of the series. Um, what did you make of, you know, just a positive thing from how he went about his duties? I mean, when you lose a test match in this manner, it's very difficult to sit and really try to, to think about what's going to happen moving forward. You know, 
what are the positives moving forward. But he was one of the takeaways. And, you know, coming into this match, we spoke about it based on what he would have done in county cricket. Um, so now I'm starting to wonder if there's a link in, you know, doing well in county cricket and then um, performing well at this level. Well, we really shouldn't be surprised by that, Mariah, because, again, for, for those who are familiar with, with Test Match Cricket, and, I, of course, I never got anywhere close to that level, but you yeah. listen to people talk about the game, yeah. you appreciate what they say in relation to the game itself, you really have to be playing consistent, high-level, first-class cricket to be ready for this format. The rarity, of course, is Mark Wood. Uh, in his case, he only plays Test Cricket. He doesn't play any first-class cricket at all, but his situation is unique because he's had so many injuries over so many years. He's 34 years of age. He's probably at an age where he really shouldn't be bowling as quickly as he does, but his right leg is strapped up like like, like if it's mummified in many ways. But but he has, has worked out his own training schedule, his fitness regimen and everything else to ensure that he's ready when called upon for Test Match Cricket. The same cannot be said of our young fast bowlers. Uh, uh, Jaden Seals, it's, 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 it's encouraging that he was able to perform so well. But, but again, you need to see a higher level of consistency, yeah. not just on his part, but Alzari Joseph was disappointing. Shamar Joseph was short of work and therefore was cramping up all the time in the first couple of test matches. Uh, the, uh, we, we saw the experience of Jason Holder, who was playing for Worcestershire. So, so what, what we're hearing about readiness and preparation is nothing new it, you know we're just covering old ground and 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 the, the people are trying to present it and this is as if this is some startling revelation in any way yeah Fajr, since we're talking about bowling can i get a bit more specific i was over the weekend i was crunching some numbers and looking at the much maligned uh, mervyn dillon and comparing his figures with that of azari joseph who in real terms, is the leader of this bowling attack. His numbers are not much better. In, in fact, they're just about on par, maybe a few adjustments on either side. He's been playing test cricket now for about eight years. What is it that is it that he's not learning? What is it that he's not doing? Why he's not making the kind of progress that you'd expect from someone playing for as long as he has and leading an attack which has a Jaden Seals. And, you know, of course, absent Roach was absent, of course, could have used the experience there. But you're not seeing the kind of progress that you would expect from someone playing as long as he has. You know, Leighton, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm, it's interesting that you mentioned Mervyn Dillon, because I recall that period, late 1990s, early 2000s, when we had Mervyn Dillon, we had Ryan King, we had Franklin Rose, we had Dixon McLean, we had Pedro Collins, and a couple others. And if you really think about it, for if, if they were able to either motivate themselves or get the right guidance, they could have been an outstanding pace bowling battery for the West Indies. But again, there was the inconsistency coming out of the situation with Alzari Joseph. I think it's fair to say that Alzari Joseph has improved significantly over the past two and a half years to essentially be the leader of the West Indies attack, especially in the white ball formats. I think the disappointment this time around I, I would suggest, and I, I had this discussion uh, with Lance and Mariah earlier, uh, leading up to this test match, I believe. It has something to do with temperament, uh, because there's no question that Alzari Joseph has the ability. We've seen that before. He's gotten his 100th test wicket in the course of this, this last test match, the, the 24th West Indian, to reach that landmark, and that's a significant... Uh, achievement, so you, you can't just overlook that. But as you said correctly, uh, Leighton, we're talking about an eight-year period from 2016 to 2024. Surely by that time, you would have had someone who was so attuned to the requirements of the different formats of the international game that he or she, he in this case, will make the necessary adjustment. And I think that was the more disappointing element of it. So I would have to say it has to be something to do with, with temperament, with focus, because it seems when things don't go his way, if there's an error in the field, if there's a misrun out opportunity, somebody misfields off his bowling, he seems to get very upset very, very quickly. I don't know if that throws him off his game, but, but surely at this level of international sport, you should be able to retain your focus very, very quickly. Yeah, I, I, and I agree with you entirely because actually we had a discussion with a friend of mine over the weekend where he see, his body language tells you a lot and it actually gives encouragement to the batters he faces knowing 
that if they hit him for a couple of fours, he then loses his composure completely. But let's switch quickly because we don't have much time. The the batting, we've seen flashes from Kavim Hodge. We've seen flashes from, you know, several batsmen during the course of this series, but nobody is able to carry on. Is that too much T20 cricket, the thinking behind the batting, or is it that they're not able to focus for long periods of time while they keep getting on, especially after getting good starts in many of these instances? I'm actually surprised you could fit in some cricket with all the Olympics going on, so let me give you a quick answer uh, to, to that, Leighton. I, I think it's the latter, uh, because... Every other country plays a lot of T20 cricket. Every other country has that duel between T20 and, 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 and Test Match cricket, yet they're able to make the adjustment. I think it's up to our players to really show that, that level of focus and be consistently successful. Great that Kavim, Gaj got, got, Kavim, Kavim Hodge got 100. Great that Alec Athanes got 82. It's, it's so encouraging to see Mikhail Louis featuring in, in three consecutive 50 partnerships and finishing up with a half century. But we need these players to be consistent. It's not good enough to get a good score and nothing for about three or four innings because this is the result you get 3 nil. So to, to, to quickly answer your question, Leighton, yeah. we need to have our players working on their games to the extent that they can be consistently successful. You don't expect a, a century every innings. Not even Bradman did that but you need to see a, a much higher level of performance that can be considered acceptable at test level. Yeah, Faz, well, as always, we enjoy chatting with you and I'm hoping that, you know, all the things that we continue to talk about on this show, we can at least get some sort of hope when we play South Africa in that two test match series. We'll be in the Caribbean. I'm hoping the Caribbean conditions will assist and at least we'll have a bit more positive things to talk about. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Faz. We'll talk again soon. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to continue our discussion on cricket, but a different angle with this cricket topic.